this is Ghana tonight. Coming up next, there's a lot that happened and the anticipation ahead of Parliament today. The quest for Parliament to resume to deal with uh, urgent government business. Has hit a snag as Speaker of Parliament, Abban Sumana, Kinsfor Bagman, adjourned sitting indefinitely amidst confusion over the declaration of four parliamentary seats vacant. We unpack the issues, plus a conversation with a former Supreme Court judge, Justice William Atuguba, retired, and also would, would have one of the persons who have been following this quite closely also joining us on Zoom in a bit shortly. But it's uncertain when Parliament will resume. And, and that is because the Speaker of Parliament, Right Honorable Alban Sumana, Kinsfor Bagman, adjourned sitting indefinitely, deepening the woes of the new patriotic party caucus in Parliament, as this has dire implications and consequences on government business. And stay with me every step of the way tonight, because I'm going to show you the, the consequences if this indefinite adjournment of Parliament stays and the businesses that are pending right now until further notice. Let's see exactly what the speaker said today after making reference to the service on him on this particular case at the Supreme Court. I note that we currently have a quorum to transact business, but not to take decisions. In view of the current circumstances, the fact that there is a question on the composition and constitution of parliament, and having regard to the public interest and the exigencies of the state of affairs in parliament, I will proceed to, in accordance with standing orders 59, adjourn the house indefinitely. That is sine die. So, based on the details of standing orders 59, the Speaker adjourned Parliament Sinedir indefinitely. And as we speak now, we're getting information that there are some attempts by the NPP caucus in Parliament to have some members also come together and have the Speaker, in fact, get the Speaker to call an emergency sitting in the coming days. So we'll see how the coming days will look like. But as the status quo is right now, Parliament has been adjourned indefinitely. And then stay with me, we'll tell you why this is of concern, especially to the NPP caucus and by extension to, to the executive and, and government for that matter. But the makeup of Parliament as we speak, based on the Speaker's declaration last week, Thursday, is that the NDC still stands with 136 of the seats or members of parliament in this eight parliament the npp by the implication of the speaker's decision hold 135 of the NPs in parliament and you recall <laughs> earlier today there's some news around that cynthia morrison the gonna member of parliament was decided to go in independent one of four mps who has been affected by the speaker's decision had rescinded her decision to go independent. Well, she's confirmed to us that that news is false, it's not true, it's unfounded, it has no basis, no legs, no feet. We'll hear from her and, and, and play back that shortly and, and why uh, she holds that particular view. But this is the composition. And you recall the speaker make reference to the fact that, yes, the members of parliament who were in the house today, they were enough to form a quorum because... Parliament only needs one-third of the members here in present to form a quorum. That's about 92 out of 275 if you do the calculation. Right. But if you also look at the analysis as others have brought in, that to the extent that there are four of them who are off now, we're dealing with 271. That still does not negate this particular um, instance of whether they form a quorum or not. But... The reason why the Speaker did not go ahead to have Parliament consider other items on the order paper for today was that they were not enough to do business. The members of Parliament present at the time were not enough to execute the business of the House. And the reason being that per the standing orders, they needed about 138 members of Parliament 
to be present. But per the mathematics, as we've seen right now, even with the NDC's current numbers, if all of them, all of the MPs of the NDC were in Parliament earlier today, they still wouldn't have been able to do business. That's what it says in there. And then these are what it dictates, that the majority of members of Parliament must be present, and not only be present, but must also be voting or take part in decision making and in fact the, the dictates of this you can make reference to in the justice abdullah versus the attorney general case and how things played out so that was settled by the speaker's declaration and the decision to adjourn parliament synodair indefinitely today but as to whether that news that some of you may have read, that Cynthia Morrison, a Gona West member of parliament, a sitting MP, who decided to contest that seat as an independent candidate in this forthcoming election, had decided to rescind that decision and, and, and rejoin the, the NPP. She says that's not true. She doesn't know where this is coming from. It's unfounded. The pictures that were slashed on, on social media. In fact, there were those who had indicated that that was the decision they and reason why that, that she decided to go back to the MPP. She says those pictures, they went to Parliament and took them. It had no basis for a decision on her not going independent. She spoke on News 360 earlier today. Take a look. Um, I, I went to Parliament today. We had our cocoa, and after that we had um, a couple of meetings. I took pictures with my friends and leadership and all that. And some of them, normally we put, we put them on our platforms. I don't know who is trying to do mischief and post all these pictures. I just got to the constituency only to hear that I've been offered 50 million CDs to step down and it's all over the place. And nothing like that has happened. If I send my decision to write to the EC, have you seen any official letter? And I haven't even really sent any letter to my leadership. You can find out from them. Nothing like that has happened. So whoever is a very bad journalist, because before you put anything out, at least you have to consult me or ask the leadership, even if I brought any letter, or ask EC if I have sent any letter to them. Nothing like that has happened. So there you have it. So you can safely disregard that news that um, she, she's not going independent. She's resolute according to what she said today, that she's contesting that constituency as an independent candidate on December 7, 2024, Agona West constituency. She was not alone in this. In fact, the Suhum Member of Parliament, Kujua Santi, was also reported to have decided to now f go back to the MPP to reconcile and fall in love with the party again. He has also come out to say that that's not true. He has not rescinded that decision to go uh, independent. But beyond all of this, the pending government business is what many are looking at, how this indefinite adjournment of parliament would be. Take a look at this and follow me closely. There are two pres the President Kufuado's Supreme Court nominees who have not been approved yet by parliament. There are tax waivers for some 1D, 1F companies that have not been approved by parliament. Apart from that, there are the approval of the 2025 first quarter budget that has not yet been even presented and approved by parliament. So whoever wins the 2025 election, uh, the 2024 election getting into the year 2025, the first quarter 2025, if things stay as it is now, the outcome of that election and who wins would have to find a budget to run the country at least for the first quarter of the year 2025. As we speak, if parliament and things stay this way, they may not come back. The LI2462, that a promise was made to the organized labor, that when parliament reconvenes, government had indicated they were going to take steps to repeal that law that opened up forest reserves for mining companies to get in there to mine and destroy our forest reserves. LI2462 is still on our books because Parliament has not started the process of repealing LI642. And then you also have the $250 million financial stability fund approval. That's not happened. And this is crucial because it, it is part of the process of 
giving some cushioning to the financial sector in this country that was heavily hit and impacted by both the domestic debt exchange program and then also the financial sector cleanup. And as long as this is pending, you should avert your minds to how the financial architecture in this country is also going to be impacted. The Ghana energy sector loan approval is also pending. And so many bills are also pending. The major of Electricity Company of Ghana and NETCO pending. You also have the Business Regulatory Reform Commission bill pending. And also the Office of the Administrator of School Lands pending. Interpretation bill pending. Nuclear Power, Ghana Authority Bill, Thema Power Authority, Major of Energy Commission and PRC, all of that pending. We also have uh, the VRA and the Bui Power Authority Major Bill 2024 pending, and this has been heavily resisted fiercely by the senior staff of the Volta River Authority. I'm sure that hearing all of this and the fact that Parliament, this eighth Parliament, paired this adjournment may not even come back to sit again, <laughs> they, they, would, they would be excited, sort of, because we understand that this parliament, this last sitting of this eighth parliament was supposed to last for three weeks, and then they would adjourn finally on the 14th of November, and then they will go and campaign. The next time this eighth parliament MPs come back is January 6th, so they then crossover and handover to the new parliament, that's the ninth parliament. So essentially, with this indefinite adjournment, if nothing is done, the life of this eighth parliament has effectively ended. That's what this means today. Gary Nemako is the director of legal affairs for the MPP, also expressed his thoughts about what happened earlier today. Take a look. Sometimes if you are a senior lawyer, you speak in parables. You don't sometimes speak direct, you speak in parables. And everybody who understands how lawyers speak in terms of experienced lawyers, how they speak, you understand the direction they are going. The speaker did not miss words. He acknowledged the fact that he, he had been set with a court ruling. And the ruling simply means the order the speaker made, the ruling that the speaker made, uh, I think on the, the date is not coming out, I think the date is 17 or so. The ruling that the speaker made, it's another ruling from the Supreme Court staying that ruling. He's staying that ruling. So uh, let tempest calm down. Let the country's nerve calm down. Uh, there is no need at this stage to fix anybody to say, well, I'm right, I'm wrong. It's a constitutional supremacy we are dealing with. It's about democracy, about rule of law. It's not about rule of men or people using the machetes to go and kill anybody. The internal strategy we are going to take. I cannot devote to you publicly. I will go into a caucus meeting, have a discussion between party and government. Uh, Communicate will come out. And I think, by and large, whatever will happen, publicly you will see it. Stage, you do not expect me to come out to tell the public what the party intends to do or what the government intends to do at this stage. It's too early in the day. But what I can tell you and assure the public is that peace will prevail. The storms will be calm. But in a matter of days, in a matter of days, you will realize that everything will be calm. He's hoping in a matter of days uh, there will be some calm brought to, to this situation. And let's stay a bit further on this matter and, and briefly. Going to be joined on, on the telephone shortly by the Honorable James Agalga. He is a member of parliament for the Bosa North constituency, one of the, the leading members of the NDC caucus as well in this eighth parliament. Um, you know, served as interior minister at some point. And... He's joining us on the telephone right now to have a quick conversation on how things are playing out and then also how the coming days will look like right now for this eighth parliament and whether this indefinite adjournment is one that we're hearing uh, that there are some MPP MPs who are having to get parliament to be recorded. Honorable James Agaga, good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Good evening, uh, my friend. Right. Now, we're hearing that some uh, there's some effort by the MPP caucus to have the speaker recall parliament for emergency sitting. I mean, what how how will this play out? What's the path that this will take if that is what is happening? Look, uh, Alfred, any attempt by the minority or a group of MPs to have parliament recalled must be resisted uh. because. Because why we have 
inflicted this situation on ourselves. Only today, we were in parliament. The minority elected to walk out. And the speaker was left with no choice but to suspend uh, the House indefinitely. Now, you know what? When members travel to their constituencies and a group of MPs decide to trigger the relevant standing orders for a new call, you know, you do this at the expense of the taxpayer. Besides, you inconvenience members of parliament. Alfred, let me give you an example. My constituency is about the farthest from the capital. If I have to travel by road, I need to do 14 hours of drive time. Okay? Even if I decide to fly to Tamale, I still have to do about four hours to get to my constituency. And so, I think that we must get serious as, 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 as parliamentarians. What would occasion a sudden, I mean, recall? What would occasion that? I thought some members of parliament have gone to the Supreme Court. Fundamental question is, has the Supreme Court dealt with the matter that is before it? If not, it means the status quo entry, which is that the NDC court now constitutes the majority, holds. So even if Parliament were to be recalled, what 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 would have changed? So Alfred, I think I think we must get serious. And uh, if I were the Speaker, any such invitation to recall Parliament would be thrown away. I see, but the, the Speaker adjourning Parliament indefinitely was it part of the the cocktail of options that you, the NDC caucus, was expecting? Well, the speaker's um, exercise of discretion to adjourn the House indefinitely was never on the table. It, 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 it wasn't something we uh, thought of. We had the expectation that at least uh, the speaker was going to allow us to continue with uh, the business of the day. We did not anticipate a workout by the minority until they sprang that surprise on us. We thought that uh, uh, law-abiding members of parliament, they would have uh, taken over their seats, I mean, sat to the left of Mr. Speaker, uh, to allow for government business to, to, to flow. Unfortunately, they decided to run away. So, um, Alfred, I, 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 they cannot have their cake and eat it. You see, they decided to walk out, you know, today, they stage the walkout when they knew that there is some government business to be transacted. So if, if they acted responsibly and the speaker had now decided to suspend the housing deficit, I mean, it would be mischievous for them to turn around and, and, and say they are asking for an emergency recall. An emergency recall to do what? to consider urgent government business. As I run through, there are two Supreme Court, court Justice business? nominees. What is the nature of the, the, the business? If you look at today's order paper, what was on the order paper? A number of bills. A number of bills on the establishment of some public universities. But why on earth did they back in the chamber? question is, have they now succeeded in having the matter they themselves have uh, uh, sent to the Supreme Court result. Has the Supreme Court uh, uh, given a definitive pronouncement now as we speak? Right. You know, you know, you know, when the speaker hinted that, oh, he has now been served with some uh, uh, orders of the Supreme Court, all along, hmm, things were done at Mr. Speaker's blind side. Now, if he has been served, the, 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 there is a statutory period within which Mr. Speaker, I mean, can, would be allowed to file, I mean, his uh, uh, defense in the matter. Statement right. of case. Okay. Etc. There, there, there is a certain statutory period. If the statutory period within which Mr. Speaker must file, I mean, his defense or statement of case is not exhausted, 
the Supreme Court gets to do nothing about the matter pending before it right now. So right. what it means is that the status quo must be respected. So if, 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 if they suddenly, uh, 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 you know, decide to trigger a recall, I mean, what, 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 what would they be seeking to achieve? Number James, I got that. recall would not change the status quo. Right. We'll see how the coming days will look like on this matter. I thank you so much for talking to us. My pleasure. James Agaga is a private legal practitioner himself, a member of parliament for the Bosa North Constituency, former deputy interior minister. Coming up next year on Ghana tonight, the attorney general disagrees with the speaker of parliament's decision declaring the four parliamentary seats vacant and supporting the position of Alexander Peño Markin in the Supreme Court case. We have got the details for you here on Ghana tonight. And Dennis Barry Wadam, Esquire, is joining us right now. Dennis, what's, what's the Attorney General saying in this one? Well, so Alfred, you recall that on Friday, when the Supreme Court gave its ruling um, on that application by Alexander Fenyo Makin mm. as to the stay of execution of the Speaker's ruling, the Supreme Court, in granting that stay, gave three orders. One was to the effect that the ruling be stayed or suspended till the pending the final determination of the case. Mm -hmm. Two was for the said MPs to be recognized as members of parliament. And then finally was that for parties to file their statements of case within seven days. So the attorney general has just filed his statement of case being the second defendant in the case. Right. So it means that keep, the case is shaping up well and nice. And if parties are, all parties are able to file their processes within the seven days, um, the coming days, we should be heading towards hearing. But of course, the Attorney General has been making arguments as to why he believes that <coughs> the MPs should not, um, I mean, the seats should not be declared vacant. What's this been saying? Well, so the Attorney General simply says that by virtue of an MP filing to contest an upcoming election, that in itself does not um, lead to the vacation of the case. For him, he makes the case that every parliament has a fixed term. So every parliament has a lifespan of four years. And that when you are in that particular parliament and you express an intention or an interest to contest for an election in the next parliament, that in itself should not be a ground for you to vacate your seat. This is an argument that you have heard before. So he makes reference to the, to the constitution and says that he does, he does not think that the framers of the constitution intended to create a vacancy of a seat of an MP that if the current term of parliament, the MP leaves the party of which he was a member at the time of election to join another party or seeks to remain in parliament as an independent candidate. Mm -hmm. So essentially saying that so even if these MPs for whatever reason have filed dominations or have expressed interest to contest either as independent candidates if they came on the ticket of a party or if an uh, on the ticket of one party and you want to go as an independent candidate, that should not be grounds for the declaration of that seat as a vacant one. Right. He goes on to also talk about the filing of nominations by sitting MPs to contest future parliamentary elections. So you recall, you, you, you would notice that he keeps making reference to future parliamentary elections mm. to the effect that what these MPs have done or are alleged to have done does not apply to their being in this particular eighth parliament. Right. It applies to the ninth parliament. Because before coming to this, the AG has set the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court to hear this matter mm. because he believes that the, the provision in question has been subjected to multiple interpretations and there's ambiguity. For that reason, the Supreme Court is the um, right forum for this particular one. But Alfred, if you recall, the <clears throat> argument that Attorney General is making about this conduct having to do with the next parliament is one that... The man who started this litigation process, uh, Alexander Fenyo Makin, mm -hmm. majority leader. Yes. Well, that's as he filed this. He filed in ca his capacity as majority leader. Indeed. So he also made that particular argument. And I mean, parts of the argument he makes is what we see on the screen now, where he tries to interpret it to say that the phrase, and that is coming from Article um, 97 1 each, that mm -hmm. if he leaves the party on which he was a member at the time of his election to parliament and could to join another party or seeks to remain in parliament as found in article 97 1h of the 1992 constitution refers to the current parliament emphasis on the current parliament of which the affected member of parliament is a member 
and not the future parliament as it is. So the bottom line is that both um, the majority leader or Alexander Fenyo Makin in this case mm -hmm. and then the AG are basically making the same point. However, the speaker disagrees and that was why in his ruling that led to the declaration of the seat vacant. Yes. He did explain that in his view, when you look at that particular provision, it, if it were to apply to future parliaments, they would be rendered superfluous. Indeed. By the time the next parliament is constituted, any member of parliament who has defected or switched politically, al political allegiance during the current parliament will no longer be in violation of this provision. They will start the next session aligned with their new party or as an independent candidate. Thus, there will be no defection and the violation will be wiped clean. Mm -hmm. Essentially, the Speaker of Parliament is saying that the argument about that conduct being futuristic mm -hmm. does not hold. Right. Because if that were allowed to hold, it means that by the time you even get there, the people would have been properly aligned and there would not be any violation of the article. So clearly, there's some confusion as to what the, the, the interpretation of this provision is. Yes. And that is the basis on which the Attorney General asserts the jurisdiction of the Supreme, Supreme Court, Court. Um, citing Articles 2.1 and then Articles 131 of the 1990 Constitution, having given the Supreme Court the, um, that jurisdiction to interpret that particular provision. Dennis, Prober Wadam, Squire, thank you. Always a pleasure being here, Alfred. Indeed. So live here on Ghana tonight, and it's on the back of this that, thankfully, we, we bring in Justice William Atuguba, retired. He's a former Justice of the Supreme Court of the Republic of Ghana. I thank you so much for joining us, sir. Good evening to you. Uh, thank you. Uh, to, to me, this says I don't like them. Just uh, brothers, just talk. Uh, say, sir, sir, sir. I think you are used to them, but to me, they are not. <laughs> I don't enjoy them. <laughs> I mean, important thing is a human being. What uh, what you can do to help society? That's it. It's not titles and these sort of. We're all human beings. Yeah. Uh, 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 My relations, that's uh, important. Uh, uh, okay. Indeed. Well, you've earned it. But um, I thank you uh, very much for staying up to join us here on Ghana Tonight. And you, you saw my colleague run through what the latest is with this matter. You have followed this case right from last week, Tuesday, when the speaker was petitioned. And then after the 48 hours reflection, he gave a reasoned ruling on Thursday. The NPP caucus led by the leader went to the Supreme Court uh, to seek to have the speaker's decision, as was communicated last week, Thursday, in declaring these four seats vacant set aside. I mean, having followed all of this, what's your own view about how events have played out in this case? Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> the speaker did not. Uh, he referred to the fact that um, he had been served with a uh, uh, court order uh, from the Supreme Court. Uh, it was one of the factors that uh, he took into account in uh, adjourning matters indefinitely. Sunday uh, that. Uh, so the, the effect of it uh, is that uh, uh, there's, I mean, Parliament is not, uh, in session is not um, operating for some time. I mean, until it reconvenes uh, for active work. That's what <laughs> it means. I see. And as we saw today, indeed, uh, he adjourning parliament indefinitely uh, some right from tuesday and and what happened on friday some have over the right from friday to this moment questioned the supreme court's jurisdiction in getting into this matter and the form and nature of this you know the the original jurisdiction of the supreme court Will that concern be one that you would share, that the Supreme Court's jurisdiction was invoked wrongly in this case? Well, um, uh, as far as I'm concerned, this uh, 
vacation of seat matter is specifically dealt with in Article 99. Uh, clause. I think you know that, isn't it? 90. Nine, 97. Nine, nine, it's nine, no, 99. It deals with vacation of, of this, uh, among other things. Yeah. But 99 yeah. uh, is as follows. That's what the article says. The High Court shall have jurisdiction to hear and determine any question whether a person has been validly elected as a member of parliament or the seat of a member has become vacant, or a person has been validly elected as a speaker of parliament, or having been so elected, has vacated the office of speaker. A person aggrieved by the determination of the High Court under this article may appeal to the Court of Appeal. Well, that's another interesting dimension. Uh, so, the question involved here is one relating to vacation of uh, the, the seats of the four MPs involved. Uh, so it's a matter for the High Court, uh, not for the Supreme Court. Yeah, so to that extent, uh, invoking the Supreme Court over this matter is wrong. They don't, they don't have original jurisdiction. You see, original jurisdiction means invoking the cause at first instance. That's original. But they have referred jurisdiction in the sense that uh, from even this matter, because if a constitutional prohibition comes up which is uh, not plain and straightforward, requiring interpretation. Article 130, which gives the interpret, in, <clears throat> interpretive, uh, interpretative power and the enforcement power to the exclusive to the Supreme Court, uh, says that if a question relating to those issues arises in the court lower than the Supreme Court, the lower court shall stay the proceedings and refer the matter to the Supreme Court for determination, and then shall dispose of the matter before them in accordance with the interpretation. So, um, once Article 99 has entrusted vacation of this matter to the High Court, uh, the Supreme Court to say you don't just go straight at first instance to invoke it in a matter like this, but it has referred uh, jurisdiction if an issue of interpretation related to the constitution arises. So to me, uh, uh, that's how I see it. I uh, see, and the, the speaker in reading his decision on Thursday was quite clear in, in indicating that he was not seeking to interpret 97.1 G and H, but was applying that particular article and the details of it um, if violated. And as you have just, just made reference to the fact that the, the details of 97 is clear and is applicable automatically. But what we're dealing with right now, the Supreme Court has been asked to, as it were, come in because Alexander Fenyo Markin makes the argument that the, the Speaker sought to interpret the Constitution. And so the Supreme Court then takes a decision that the execution of the Speaker's decision as communicated to declare these seats vacant should be stayed. It should not be executed. Th that's what's happening right now. Yeah, but in relation to what did he, I mean, assuming he interpreted, um, in relation to what did he interpret, a vacancy in Parliament, vacancy in Parliament matter is given to the High Court under Article 99, as I read to you, not to the Supreme Court. As I'm saying that, you see, Article 
130 gives original jurisdiction of interpretation and effort, original. But where it has given jurisdiction relation to another particular matter, to a particular court, that court doesn't lose its jurisdiction. What happens is if an interpretation issue arises, Article 130 plus 2 itself says the lower court shall stay the proceedings and refer the question of interpretation to the Supreme Court for determination. And then they will determine the case in accordance with that interpretation. So in such a situation, the Supreme Court has referral jurisdiction, not original jurisdiction. Referral jurisdiction cannot be the same as original jurisdiction. And, uh, uh, and uh, Justice William, I'm talking about, uh, if, if, if you could put the, 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 the camera back on, I think we lost you briefly. But then again, the, there's been that reaction to, if you can hear me now, the decision by the Supreme Court as communicated uh, on Friday to have the speaker's the decision, the execution of the speaker's decision stayed. And from your legal lenses, is this one that the Supreme Court can do, as it were? Because that's one of the issues that has come up for discussion now, whether the Supreme Court indeed did right in having or indicating that the speaker's decision should be stayed. From where you sit, is that right? Well, I've said you know, on some other platform that <clears throat> uh, strictly in law, I mean, I don't see how they could have other stay of execution. Uh, stay of execution relates to execution uh, of um, court judgments using court processes for enforcing court judgments. That's what execution uh, in relation to court judgment means. Uh, so we don't apply this to some non-court situation. Uh, it's just not applicable. Nonetheless, um, over the years, the courts have uh, tried to do substantial justice. Uh, it's not like uh, the old and common law days when uh, uh, you had to uh, strictly frame <laughs> your action or relief. Uh, otherwise, uh, it would be pernicious. Uh, try to do substantial justice. So if somebody comes for a stay of execution and you see that, oh, I mean, it's just nomenclature, but uh, if you had asked for injunction or uh, some other uh, uh, suitable order, we, could, uh, we shouldn't uh, throw the person out because of that technical choice. Mm. Uh, so you look at the substance of the thing. Uh, even the call is stay of execution, but all the intent is suspend or, I mean, suspend the uh, the force of your ruling, the effect of it. Uh, uh, that is the substance. An injunction can achieve that. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, the emotive, uh, you know, clinging to epithets uh, is neither here nor there. That's not very helpful at all. Yeah. So then in substance, I think that's what the court did. I see. And, and, and before I let you go, and, and uh, no, we, we're going to have an extensive conversation on this matter subsequently, but I just want to find out from you, uh, there are many, because of this particular instance and a few others in the past that have expressed concern about the workings of the Supreme Court currently. Now, having served at the Apex Court for this long, do these concerns raised have merit? And as you have heard, do they raise any eyebrows for you 
or these concerns being expressed about the workings of the Supreme Court is much ado about nothing? Uh, if it, it raises eyebrows, yes, my eyebrows will be raised. <laughs> you know, uh, as a, uh, a common uh, matter of uh, human uh, inclination. Uh, but that's not a matter of law for me. Uh, I uh, cannot know uh, whether they've done so only in respect of this one or in respect of some other matters. Uh, all I can say is that uh, um, uh, courts do exp expedite uh, cases we they think uh, of um, uh, very pressing importance. Uh, so these things can happen. However, if, you know, in the terrain of uh, constitutional adjudication, uh, parity of treatment is not given, uh, uh, parity of uh, circumstances, then you can, can, can complain. But I am not seized with uh, uh, the whole gamut of uh, constitutional cases before the Supreme Court and how they have <laughs> uh, handled them. So it's difficult to, uh, to say whether this one was uh, uh, exceptionally expedited in, uh, when others. That's matters of fact, a uh, matter of fact. Maybe you, the journalist, can know if you, you can go to the Supreme Court and find out the number of actions that have come before them recently and uh, uh, in terms of uh, the oppressing character and how they've treated them. I sit to you in my house here. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and rightly so. And I want to thank you so much for staying up uh, to join us here on Ghana Tonight. Justice William Atuguba, retired former Justice of the Supreme Court of the Republic of Ghana, Thank you for your thoughts on this matter on Ghana tonight. Appreciate you, as always, for joining us. This is your Election Command Center. We're back after this quick break with a quick conversation on how the CSOs, NGOs are reacting to LI2462 still being on our books. Stay with us. Well, welcome back to Ghana Tonight. And um, the civil rights organizations have been reacting to what's happened in Parliament earlier today with Parliament, in fact, the Speaker adjourning Parliament, uh, Senadem. You recall that they had the expectation that the LI2462, that law that gives the mining companies access to go and mine in our forest reserves, uh, was going to be repealed, as was promised by the President through the Minister of Natural Resources, as one of the commitments to the fight against illegal mining. Well, with Parliament going on this agenda, definitely that's not going to happen anytime soon. And it's one that will keep the steam on um, as part of the other issues pending right now. Unfortunately, the expectation that they had that this will be done as soon as possible. The revocation of the LI-2462 on mining and forest reserves, well, is still um, on the plate in our books. And for as long as Parliament remains um, in indefinitely adjourned, this would still remain on our books. What's the next option for CSOs, for organized labor? That's a conversation in the coming days we're going to be having. But I want to say thank you so much, as always, for staying with us here on Ghana tonight. We have a conversation again tomorrow, same time at 10 p.m. On behalf of the rest of the team, we do appreciate your company. My name is Alfred Okanze. Have a good night.